Welcome to the narrated lecture on shortwave diathermy. Shortwave diathermy is the only method of achieving truly deep heating within the body. It has however become unfashionable in recent years, partly due to health concerns of therapists themselves. As will be discussed later, such concerns, although important, are as yet unfounded and there are adequate guidelines already in place for its safe use. Its potential benefits to patients have unfortunately become a secondary concern. Short wave describes the wavelength of radio frequency waves. For therapeutic use, this wavelength is set at 27.12 MHz. It is a rapidly alternating current, alternating between positive and negative charge at this frequency. Pulsed short wave diathermy, as with pulsed ultrasound, describes the rapid switching on and off of the electromagnetic field. Shortwave diathermy is used to deliver energy to deep tissues and may cause significant heating effects with all of the therapeutic effects that that may bring. Pulse shortwave diathermy was developed due to observations that some of the effects of shortwave diathermy could not be attributed simply to the effects of heating. It uses precisely the same energy but the pulsing allows heat to be dispersed. The degree of heat dispersal depends on the pulse rate and intensity. However, such high amounts of energy, even though it is pulsed, may still heat tissues. There are a wide range of possible treatment parameters such as time, pulse repetition rate, and pulse intensity. Due to this complexity, the optimum settings have yet to be determined. Electromagnetic energy essentially exists as two forms. An electrical field exists between and around charged particles in the form of protons and electrons. Where electrical charges flow from positive to negative, this is an electric current. A magnetic force is set up at 90 degrees to the flow of electrical current and the area in which this force acts is called a magnetic field. Both the magnetic and electrical fields will have an effect on charged particles. The actual passage of electromagnetic energy through the body has little effect on the tissues themselves. However, the electrical currents and magnetic fields created, both of which are set up in the tissues, will create physiological changes due to their effects on charged particles. There are two ways of applying shortwave diathermy, both of which are dependent upon making the patient an integral part of the electrical circuit. An inductive method involves the flow of electromagnetic energy through a coil. A magnetic field is set up at right angles to the coil and it is this that creates small electrical currents in the tissues. In the past, this method involved wrapping the limb in an inductive coil, but more modern methods use a coil within a drum, which is applied at right angles to the th tissues. The capacitive method involves placing the tissue to be treated directly between two electrodes and the body acts as a dielectric completing the circuit and conducting the electromagnetic current from one electrode to the other. Heat is produced by the effects of the electromagnetic energy on these three different types of molecules and particles. Charged molecules and particles include sodium ions and some proteins. The rapidly alternating current attracts and repels charged particles depending on the direction of electrical force. This causes collisions between particles and there is a loss of kinetic energy, thereby producing heat. This is the most effective method of heat production using shortwave diathermy. Dipolar molecules, those with positively and negatively charged elements, include water and some proteins. These molecules will line up according to the direction of the electrical, electrical field, with positive being attracted to the negative electrode and vice versa. As the field alternates, these molecules will rotate, again leading to heat production. This method is moderately efficient in producing heat. 
Non-polar molecules such as fat are not directly affected by the alternating electromagnetic field. Their electron cloud, however, will move back and forth, coupled with heating due to the effects on blood electrolytes, which is then insulated by the fat, means that heat may be produced. This is the least efficient method of heat production. As introduced earlier, shortwave diathermy may be applied in two different ways. The inductive method is most commonly used using a circuit plot, a drum applied at right angles to the tissues, or a flexi plot, an electrode which can be folded to the shape of the body part. Induction causes deeper heating than the conductive method. Both use an inductive coil inside the electrode and are applied with approximately 2 cm between the electrode and the skin. A folded towel may be used to maintain that space and prevent the buildup of moisture between the drum and the skin surface. The capacitor method uses plate electrodes applied on the same or opposite sides of the body part. This method causes more superficial heating than the inductive method. The distribution of the electromagnetic field depends upon the size and position of electrodes, with larger electrodes spreading the field more widely and closer electrodes concentrating the field. The type of tissue also affects, with fat decreasing conductivity. The shape of the body part, with parts closer to the electrodes being heated preferentially, and wider electrodes causing more even heating, usually 2 to 4 cm between the electrodes and skin surface is recommended. In terms of dosage, there is little agreement or evidence in the literature. Having some idea of the average power seems to be useful, and this is a direct function of the duration of each pulse, normally fixed on most machines. The frequency of pulses and the peak pulse power or intensity are both normally adjustable. The evidence does seem to suggest that treatment for longer time periods using higher frequencies and short pulses might be more effective. The normal treatment time recommended is between 20 to 30 minutes, but there seems to be no clear rationale for this except that it fits quite well with the time that patients often have for a treatment session. It may well be that other treatment times might be more effective, but often the pragmatic decision in research trials has been to investigate commonly used treatment times such as this. As discussed, the mean power can be calculated on the basis of pulse duration, frequency and power. You will receive a table giving examples of mean power at different settings in the practical session. Generally speaking, it is good practice to use low mean power with acute injuries, medium mean power with subacute, and high mean power with chronic injuries. At all times, the patient's signs and symptoms should determine treatment progression and you should err on the side of caution in the first treatment. This diagram demonstrates the relationships between pulse duration and peak power. Pulse frequency is expressed as the number of pulses per second. Therapeutic effects include those thermal effects described for superficial heat and ultrasound. The non-thermal effects described mainly relate to the healing process and include an increase in the number and activity of cells involved with the healing process, reabsorption of hematomas, reductions in swelling, particularly all indurated swelling, an increase in fibrin and collagen repair, and increased neuro repair. Preparation of the patient should include a clear explanation so that informed consent may be gained. They may feel a very gentle heating, but they should warn you of any problems. The contraindications are outlined in the next slides. Hearing aids should be removed as the electromagnetic energy may interfere with electronic equipment. 
the area should be adequately exposed and the skin tested for thermal sensation. The patient should be positioned in such a way that moisture cannot build up on the skin surface as this will heat preferentially and may present a risk of burning. Metal will also heat preferentially, so metal plinths or chairs should be used with extreme caution. Normally, wooden plinths will be used. The output of the machine can be tested using a neon tube. It should be noted that this will only work for the capacitive method which admits an electrical field. The magnetic field emitted by the inductive method such as the circuit plot will not light the neon tube. You then switch the machine on and increase to the desired intensity. Some older machines require tuning such that the field is maximized. The modern machines do not require such adjustment. Contraindications are as follows. Particularly important are metal in the tissues, which may be heated preferentially, and pacemakers, which may be disrupted by the electromagnetic field. It is recommended that other electrical equipment is kept at least 3 meters from the machine during operation. This is why most departments ask patients to inform the physiotherapist or reception desk if they have a pacemaker or hearing aid. It is also why hospitals insist that mobile phones are switched off as the radio waves emitted may interfere with electrical equipment. These are some additional contraindications. The research evidence for the effects of shortwave diathermy and pulse shortwave diathermy have demonstrated some positive effects on the following conditions. There has also been conflicting evidence. Overall, however, there has been little research conducted and most is of poor quality. Definitive conclusions cannot therefore be made on the basis of existing literature. There have been some negative findings regarding the possible effects of exposure to shortwave diathermy on the health of therapists. Such research is fundamentally flawed but cannot be discounted. For example, a Swedish study found increased rates of birth defects in therapists using shortwave diathermy compared to the normal population. This study was criticized for not accounting for the many other possible variables, however, such as the demands of the job as a physiotherapist. Nevertheless, such findings have proved important in influencing individual therapists' personal risk assessment and the use of shortwave diathermy has seen a consequential fall in popularity. This is despite safety recommendations produced by the professional bodies which recommend a minimum distance of 1 meter from the machine and 0.5 meters from the leads. In summary, Shortwave diathermy and pulse shortwave diathermy is a form of electromagnetic radiation. It is used to cause deep heating in the tissues and is one of the most effective ways of doing so. It may also have positive effects on t tissue healing. The research evidence has yet to mature and unfortunately it is unlikely to do so in the near future because it has fallen in popularity from therapy use.